C'est le thème sur lequel nous sommes invités à nous exprimer aujourd'hui. Different perspectives between North and South regarding sustainable development. In French, we uh, should talk about sustainable rather than durable because it's a better way to define uh, the future of the planet. Now, considering the fact that North and South are dependent on each other in terms of development uh, and growth, and I mean by that that for the South it's very difficult to be on a lasting uh, trajectory if the North is not and the other way around, the uh, matter of different perspectives leads us to answer two questions. First of all, we have to look at the way the North and the South see sustainable development or lasting development. And uh, we have another question, the uh, relationship between North and South regarding the lasting development of all humankind. But before we discuss this, I would like to talk about the dichotomy between North and South. People uh, talk about dichotomy, although it's outdated, partly at, at any rate, because uh, ever since the globalization gathered speed in the 70s, we no longer can talk about uh, homogeneous situations, although they were at the time. Nowadays, the uh, groups are much more fragmented because of uh, globalization. Some Asian countries have followed a spectacular development path in the last few years in Africa, especially uh, Sahel Africa or in the African Horn, are still trapped in uh, underdevelopment. And so between those countries, the uh, divide is growing. The same could be said about the northern countries. United States, Canada, Australia and Europe have often come up against the problem of uh, global warming, uh, greenhouse effect, Kyoto Protocol. Therefore, we can no longer say that northern countries are united and southern countries aren't either. The dichotomy is also outdated because well beyond the growing heterogeneity and well beyond the variations between northern and southern countries, some, several southern countries uh, look more like northern countries and the other way around. Northern countries look like southern countries in some cases as well. By that I mean that some uh, southern countries have become wealthier in the last 40 years and therefore there is not much distance between them and some of the northern countries and likewise, or maybe in a different way, some northern countries look more like southern countries. First of all because temperatures are growing in northern countries and not if we want to talk about climate issues, but also in some northern countries, part of the population has become poorer over the last 40 years and inequality, social inequalities have increased. And finally, there are now things developing in northern countries that were characteristic of southern countries. But still, the dichotomy makes sense nowadays because uh, whether we like it or not, in the history of humankind, northern countries are still wealthier, very wealthy. Possibly they have reached opulence compared with southern countries, uh, which, although some of them have become wealthier, are still poorer than northern countries. The southern hemisphere is very often still trapped in the difficulties that we no longer are facing in northern countries regarding access to food, water, education, healthcare, and uh, fundamental rights and freedom, or even safety. So northern countries are still very different from the southern hemisphere. But likewise, the southern hemisphere is distinguished by a number of problems that are that we're not familiar with in northern countries, and still those, some of those problems characterize southern countries. The dichotomy also makes sense regarding the question we're debating today, sustainable development, because uh, northern countries have uh, developed earlier than southern countries, and therefore they bear a responsibility. First of all, because they have damaged the environment for the last 150 to 100 years. 
we very often still talk about the North and the South, which brings me to the two questions that will introduce the debate. The uh, different representations regarding sustainable development between the North and the South. And I would like to uh, introduce the debate by talking about the relationship between nature and history. Let us look at ancient history. If we were to look at sacred uh, texts of, of the oldest religions, Christianism, Buddhism, Confucianism, uh, even religions that are different, such as the animistic religion, we would not be standing at uh, two opposite extremities and uh, nature and humankind might be closer because obviously uh, nature dominates man and nature provides benefits to man, helping growth and nature at the same time imposes its own paces, its own events, droughts, storms, floods to human populations with the consequences that we're all familiar with, hunger, famine, epidemics. So for many, many years, the relationship between man and nature was relatively closer than we expected, depending on whether we were in the north or in the south. And things started changing at the time of the Renaissance and even gathered speed in the 18th and 19th century at the century of enlightenment, the rationalistic uh, revolution, and finally the positivist and industrial revolution in the 19th century. The northern countries took a different path and started uh, taming nature and using nature for its own benefit. Without res and thinking that nature could be exploited, that there was no limit to the reserves. And can we say that the southern countries have not participated in the damage done to nature and that uh, the southern countries have only had a virtual behavior? Of course not. This is simply due to the fact that they were underdeveloped, less developed than northern, northern countries, and uh, they therefore had a different relationship with nature a stronger kind of uh, connection during the colonial era and even following the colonial era one could observe that southern countries were replying to the uh, northern development in an unbalanced way but still they started having the same needs and they had a limited uh, respect for nature a limited concern and this is therefore the way we can understand the relationship between uh, north and southern uh, northern and southern hemispheres everybody agreed on the fact that because northern countries bear a historical responsibility they had to open the way and be the first to make efforts. We all know about the Kyoto Protocol. We know that northern countries, or most of them, have not made the efforts we expected from them. But most of them have agreed to the fact that they bear a greater responsibility uh, for the damage done to nature versus southern countries. However, if one looks at the development, the recent development of Asian countries or China, India, it is obvious that uh, those uh, countries uh, have a development which uh, is not centered on the concern for nature, and therefore it will be necessary to redefine the relationship they have with nature, especially during the COP21 meeting, which will take place in uh, Paris in December. We will not be able to find agreements uh, whereby all the efforts uh, rely on the North to uh, come up with uh, some kind of uh, sustainable development. Everybody will have to be involved, southern countries as well. This is a collective responsibility, and it includes those countries in the southern hemisphere which have not developed and are still in a state of extreme poverty, including small islands, some uh, state islands in, the, in Oceania, for which we need to find a very uh, quick solutions uh, in this relationship between north and south.